Niacinamide, also known as vitamin B3, is a potent, effective, and popular skincare active with amazing brightening and barrier-boosting benefits, but it can be a bit intimidating to work with. So if you have been wanting to start formulating with niacinamide but haven't been sure where to start, you're in the right place. In this video, you'll learn how much niacinamide to use, how to include it in your formulations, and I'll be debunking a super common niacinamide myth that scares lots of people away from working with this awesome ingredient. I'm sharing four completely free niacinamide formulations to harness the brightening, anti-inflammatory, acne-combating, ceramide-boosting awesomeness that is niacinamide. The first formulation uses just five ingredients, making it perfect for beginners, and then each one afterwards adds a couple new ones to bring even more benefits to the formulations. Let's get started. Our first formulation is a simple hydrating mist that stars niacinamide and just a touch of moisturizing vegetable glycerin. You don't have to package this one in a mister bottle and make it a mist, but I love a good refreshing face mist in the summer. We'll be using 4% niacinamide in the first three formulations today. Niacinamide is typically used in the 2-6% range, though I've seen recommendations as low as 0.05% and as high as 10%. We're going to make 50 gram batches of each formulation today, so weigh out 2 grams niacinamide. Up next, weigh out 1 gram vegetable glycerin to boost the moisturizing goodness of the formulation. To preserve, we'll need 0.25 grams liquid germal plus. Up next, 46.72 grams of distilled water hydrates the skin and dilutes everything to a skin safe level. And lastly, to pull the pH down just a wee bit, you'll need 0.03 grams of a 50% citric acid solution. To make a 50% citric acid solution, simply combine equal parts by weight of citric acid and distilled water and wait for the citric acid to dissolve. This can take a few minutes. 0.03 grams is pretty reliably one drop of this solution. So even if your scale isn't registering anything after one drop, stop there. Stir everything together and that's it for our very first niacinamide formulation. Package this first formulation in a mister bottle or a bottle with a dropper top. As you can see, it's really easy to include niacinamide in your formulations. It's readily water soluble and mixes in easily. All of the formulations I'm sharing today are cold processed, but niacinamide is heat stable and can be included in the heated water phase of your formulation if it has one. If you wanted to use more or less niacinamide, you'd simply adjust the distilled water to keep everything in balance. Wondering about the pH of this formulation? We'll talk about that later in the video, but for now, let's move on to our second serum. This formulation has two more ingredients than the first one. We'll begin by weighing out two grams of niacinamide for another 4% formulation. In this formulation, we're also including some panthenol, another B vitamin, vitamin B5, for its skin soothing and moisturizing benefits. You'll need one and a half grams powdered panthenol. If your panthenol is a liquid, you can use that instead, but please check out the free Humble Bee and Me DIY encyclopedia entry on it to learn how to adjust the amount. The other new ingredient for this formulation boosts the viscosity a wee bit, giving the formulation more of a rich, serum-y feel. You'll need 0.15 grams of soft or clear xanthan gum. You can use regular xanthan gum if that's what you have, but I'd use 0.1 grams instead and adjust the water to keep the formulation balanced. If you're wondering about the differences between regular, soft, and clear xanthan gum, I recently made a patron-exclusive video comparing the three. So if you'd like to check that out and help support free formulation education, please consider becoming a patron at the exclusive videos tier. Mix the xanthan gum together with 1 gram of glycerin and 0.25 grams liquid germal plus until the mixture is uniform. Add 45.07 grams distilled water, 0.03 grams of a 50% citric acid solution, and the B vitamins. Stir, cover, and leave everything to dissolve and hydrate. This will take a couple hours, but it will eventually become clear. Package this serum in a bottle with a dropper top, or a treatment pump cap, or an orifice reducer. I'm using a treatment pump cap for this one. Our third formulation adds two more ingredients that seriously boost the luxury factor of the formulation. The first part of the formulation is mostly the same as the last one, so we'll start there. Begin by mixing 0.15 grams of soft or clear xanthan gum into one gram of glycerin and 0.2 grams of liquid dermal plus until the mixture is uniform. Add 25.12 grams distilled water and 0.03 grams of our 50% citric acid solution and stir. 
Up next, our vitamins. So add two grams niacinamide and one and a half grams of panthenol, stir, and set that aside. Now it's time for the two new ingredients. For a luxurious, hydrating boost, weigh out 10 grams of a 1% hyaluronic acid solution. This is a solution that you will make yourself from powdered hyaluronic acid, and I have linked to instructions on how to do that in the free partner blog post, so make sure you check that out if you've never done it before. And our last new ingredient adds a lovely scent to our serum. You'll need 10 grams of hydrosol of choice or a blend. I'm using a combination of lavender and rosemary hydrosols for this batch. Add the hyaluronic acid and the hydrosols to the rest of the serum, stir, cover, and leave everything to dissolve. While that happens, let's chat about pH and a really common niacinamide myth. You might have read that formulations containing niacinamide have to be in the 5.5 to 6 pH range, or it can deteriorate and cause skin irritation. This relatively narrow pH range scares people away from formulating with niacinamide, especially if they don't have a pH meter. From my reading, this worry about skin irritation at lower pHs isn't terribly applicable to skincare. Basically, in order for niacinamide to start breaking down into ammonia and niacin with any speed, the pH needs to be far more acidic than 5.5. We're talking levels of acidity that you wouldn't want anywhere near your skin. If you'd like to learn more, I've shared links to detailed articles on this topic from cosmetic chemists Stephen Coe and Amanda Fox and Hill in the free Humble Bee and Me DIY encyclopedia entry on niacinamide. But basically, you don't need to worry too much about the pH of your niacinamide formulations. If they're in a good place for the skin, roughly 4.5 to 6, that's great. That range is roughly where these formulations will land when made as written. So if you have a pH meter and can test the pH, awesome! But I really wanted these formulations to be as beginner friendly as possible, so I chose a preservative that works across a really broad range and went easy on the citric acid so we will reliably end up in a safe range as long as you don't change anything. Once the third serum has dissolved, bottle it up. You really don't have to wait for the serum to turn clear to package it, I just waited so that you can see that it does go clear. I am loving the Orphis Reducer approach these days, it makes it really easy to just shake a couple drops of the serum into my palm. Use these serums after cleansing, but before any richer moisturizers or oil serums. A few drops is more than enough. Spread the serum over your clean face before following up with your favorite cream. I also like using the mist throughout the day whenever I'm looking for a refreshing boost. And now for serum number four. We are really amping up the brightening, skin soothing, and hydrating goodness with this luxurious formulation, which you can find in this video here. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, and I will see you next time.